uh, Vice Chair Harimoto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just in general, let me say that, uh, oh, let me first start by addressing IHS also. Um, yes, we did hear a lot today and in past hearings, but um, I think many of us really appreciate all the good work that IHS does. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is that it's not a one-size-fits-all. So I know that IHS has helped many, many, many people, and they do good work. But it's not for everyone. So I think we're hearing some of the other side um, can't satisfy everyone. So I just wanted to start by saying that. So thank you, uh, Connie. Uh, but beyond that, if this committee and council is going to move something forward, I really would like it to, to be Bill 42. Just addressing the various iterations of, of the Sitlai Bill, I really understand the reason why the mayor proposed starting with Waikiki, and I fully concur with that. Um, so I hope that we can have that full discussion in a while. But let me, let me just say, I'm going to pull out my, my notes from the past three meetings, or maybe four meetings, I lost track, about why I'm not supporting any of these sit-line bills. I just cannot support these bills. But again, if we are to move something forward, I hope that it will be just Bill 42 with some future implementation date. Um, but we'll see. But anyway, I'm going to go through some of my statements that I made many times before. And um, I feel that we're getting close to the end, and I really need to say these again. So pardon me, I know you've heard it all before, but um, this is important. So my notes are getting kind of worn here, but. Uh, so let me say again, I think we all understand there is a problem. I don't think any one of us sitting here is going to say there is no problem. There is a problem. But I think we disagree on what the solutions are. Um, and again, you know, this problem didn't develop overnight. I think we heard the managing director admit that. You know, we all understand these problems have been around for decades. The homeless situation has been allowed to go unaddressed for decades. And it's gotten to what some people call a crisis. And be that as it may, now we're faced with some actions. But because in my opinion, perhaps government has failed over the past many, many decades to address this. Why is it that we're looking for an overnight solution? I, I just don't understand that. It's a very complex situation, very difficult. There is no simple solution, but yet we're pr proceeding and proposing um, like it's an overnight solution, and it's not. Making a law like this is not going to solve the situation. It is not. I think sometimes as elected officials, we, we look for these quick fix kind of things to do to say, yes, we've, we've done our part. Um, but I truly believe this is going to make the situation worse. It, this will exacerbate the situation. We've heard from HPD that their intent is not to arrest people. And I, I give them that. You know, their intent is not to, but the reality is that's what the law says. They will cite people sitting and lying on the sidewalks, of course, after they've been warned. They've been asked to move away, but where else are they going? There's no question in my mind that eventually they will be cited. They'll go to court. They have no money to pay the $1,000 fine. They're going to end up in jail. How does having a criminal record now help them? I just don't understand this. I really don't. We, we've all talked about housing first. I think there's total agreement that housing first is the answer. We've heard it from the managing director. We've heard it from almost everyone. I don't think I've ever heard someone who say that's not the answer. <coughs> So if we have agreement housing first is the answer, we have agreement that there's a problem, we have agreement that we need to do something, I just don't see the pieces adding up that 
now we're trying to make a law to say you can't sit in line on the sidewalk. If we're going to do that, as I've said many times, let's do it after we have housing first in place. I, I just don't understand why we're doing the law to make it a criminal offense before we have the solution that we all agree on. It, it's just beyond me. We have this, the Interagency Council on Homelessness. Finally, after all these years, finally we have the state, the city, all the providers working together. And they're all working on housing first. They're working on the, the great services to wrap around housing first. But we're not there yet. And here we are talking about passing this law to make it a crime to sit and lie on the sidewalk when there are no alternatives. For people who are willing to, to go into existing shelters, that's great. But to say that there's existing space in existing shelters, therefore, that's the answer. No, we, we know for a fact there's many homeless people for various reasons who cannot or refuse to go into existing shelters. So, you know, to me that's a red herring to say there is space. We just need the patience and the willpower to get housing first in place before we make this law. And as we've always said over and over, the lack of affordable housing is really part of the problem. Let's not only talk about stopping existing homeless from living on the streets, but let's stop the flow of homeless. Stop the flow of people to become homeless. I think that's the greater issue that we need to address. If we don't address that, people will still fall into homeless and it's, it, it'll just be a, a problem that'll go on. So I, I just don't know. We talk about the affordable housing situation, as was mentioned. You know, there's true affordable housing and what I call fake affordable housing. And we need to really address the truly affordable housing, which really is the low-income rentals. We need to address that all together with what we're trying to do. We cannot address this only by making this simple law. It's not going to work. And you know, I'm not going to be here in a few months, but as long as I'm here, I really would like us to focus on true solutions and not a Band-Aid solution. Um, I'm happy to hear the Waikiki businesses um, commit to, to funding and supporting. That's great. I really applaud them for doing that. But that, again, is not going to solve the problem. And, and you know, finally, I just get the sense that because of whatever is happening, we somehow lost the feeling that these are real people. You know, these are real people that we're talking about. And it's just too easy to say, we'll just pass this law and, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind. These are real people. We've heard from some of them. I've, I've been out to, to visit them. I've seen a lot. These are real folks who are suffering. They're not homeless by choice. Yes, and perhaps they need, they need a little nudge, they need some support, they need some help. True, all true. But if we just pass this law just by itself, without having housing first, without having the wraparound services, nothing will change. And, and this whole notion of, of this tent city or interim solution, whatever you call it, that's just a pressure release. You know, again, we've done something, the pressure's off, and how long is this going on? Where's the pressure now to really come up with the, the firm, permanent solutions of housing first and affordable housing? I just feel that's, that's a wrong direction for us to take. So I don't know, you know, I personally, I think we all have our own reasons to vote whichever way we do. But for me, you know, my faith guides me, my faith tells me this is wrong, my moral compass tells me this is wrong, and I cannot support this. So thank you, Mr. Chair.